Okay, hi, how you doing? We're going to start off today with uh, how is it that I graph a secant function with a vertical shift and an amplitude change. So a vertical shift is just taking the axis, which is centered at about the uh, y being equal to zero, and moving it up or down, and then the amplitude is taking the maximums and minimums and stretching them uh, about that axis. So here we go. This particular function we have here is that the value that you're adding or subtracting outside of the function of the actual trigonometric function is what your vertical shift is. So if I draw in this graph here, okay, I'm going to find that I have a vertical shift of 3. So I come up here and go 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what I've begun here is I've started to draw in my uh, axis and label them. So the other thing that we need to talk about here is that my period isn't going to change because the coefficient of x is 1. So we need to talk about how is it that we're going to start to graph secant. Well the way you graph secant is by basing it off of the cosine. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to graph cosine first because it's the reciprocal identity of cosine. So to graph secant, remember we just graph cosine as if we're graphing this, just replace that with a cosine and graph it. And then after that, we just take the inverses of our graphs through our uh, vertical asymptotes and just flip them up. So here we go. Since my period doesn't change, it's still going from 0 to 2 pi. So if I break that interval down into 4, that just means that each step is going to be pi over 2. So I go pi over 2, pi over 2, pi over 2, pi over 2, which gives me pi and 2 pi. Now. What I now need to check for is where is my new uh, central imaginary axis going to be, I call it, uh, because my function is going to be centered around some horizontal axis that I'm going to have. So the vertical shift is up three, so one, two, three. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in an imaginary axis. And the way you know it's imaginary is because I dash it. So anything that's dashed on a, on a graph is imaginary. It's not really there. So here we go. If I start off at 3, I now just need to deal with my amplitude. And my amplitude here is 2. So my maximum is going to be 2 units away from this horizontal line. And it's, my minimum is going to be 2 units below this horizontal new axis. So what I need to now look at is, is my function positive or is it negative? Because if it's positive, it starts at a maximum. If it's a minimum, it starts at a... I mean, if it's a negative, it starts at a minimum, and the way you tell is the coefficient. Is it positive or negative? And the coefficient up here of the function is positive, so therefore my very first starting point will be at a maximum because I'm looking at graphing cosine. So basically what I'm looking at when I think about this function is 3 plus 2 cosine of x. I don't even think about secant, and I will think about secant after I do the cosine. So here I go. So I'm starting at 0, I'm starting at maximum up 2, so I go up 2, and then my next value, again, would be at pi over 2, but it's no longer pi over 2, 0, it's pi over 2, 3. So then I keep going here, and I find that my minimum is going to be 2 below, so it's now at pi, it's 1, and then at 3 pi over 2, it's back to its axis, and at 3 pi over 2, it's back to 3, and at 2 pi, I'm going back up to 5. So now all I have to do is I'm going to graph this in. But remember, I'm not going to graph it in with a uh, solid line. I'm going to graph it in with a dashed line because the dashed line is going to indicate that it's not really there. So the dashed line is really kind of like a guide for me to be able to graph the secant function. So here we go. So there's my dashed line. So now what I need to do is I need to actually go to where I have the intercept of my function with its imaginary axis. And wherever I intercept my imaginary axis in this case, I am going to put vertical asymptotes. So here I go. Right here is a value. At pi over 2, 3 is a vertical asymptote. So I go ahead and I plug that. I'm going to draw those in. So there's one vertical asymptote. I'm now going to look for another vertical asymptote. So another vertical asymptote here is right here at 3 pi over 2 and 3. So I draw it through there. So, vertical asymptote going in. So now all I have to deal with is if I wanted to, I could continue my pattern. And I could say, okay, well at negative pi over 2, it's going to cross back through here. So I could continue this idea, and I'm going to have another vertical asymptote. OK? 
okay? So I now have another vertical asymptote there. I'm just continuing that on to show you that I could continue on that this pattern, okay, goes on forever and ever and ever. It doesn't stop. So when I do this, I'm now just going to look at inverting my graph because I want to deal with the inverse of cosine, which is the secant. So here we go. And now I deal with the reciprocal identity because of that, and it goes ends up going like this. So it's much, it comes much like the uh, cosecant graph that we discussed, and it goes down, and those values we know will never ever touch there. And all I'm doing is taking my point and flipping everything up from here. So this one flips up this way. And now what I have left with is the graph. And if I were to erase my dashed line, so let me get rid of that, maybe get rid of some of that nonsense there. I'm not going to erase my vertical asymptotes, but I am going to erase my vertical cosine graph. What I'm left with there is you can clearly now see the graph of the secant function. Okay? So there you go. And I hope that helps, and uh, good luck.